Hey everyone, thanks for joining me again. Uh, not a whole lot new to show you. Oh yeah. I got creeper the other day, so... I get this is all got destroyed, so I replaced it with uh, ladders. And... Uh, I don't really have any plans this episode, but at the same time I wanted to get one out because people get antsy if there's not one every day. So uh, this is new. I was just playing around with minecarts and I think I invented a new type of booster. Uh, not a very good booster, but a and I doubt anyone will actually use it, but it's kind of an interesting thing. This goes on forever because it uh, goes down a downslope at every corner. And if you hop in it, it speeds up to the maximum speed because it's like you're going downhill. So I think you could hook up uh, a track junction to send it out onto a track. And it's kind of like a booster without needing another minecart to boost it. Kind of weird. I doubt it's actually useful for anything. But it does make me laugh. <laughs> and um, I was doing a test over here. I needed to know uh, what happens if you try to stack minecarts, like the Pez dispenser method, if there's mobs inside. I'm going to try to show you guys. I'm going to go to easy in case... Uh, Piece of skeleton comes out here. Yeah, of course. Um, I hate doing that, but oops. Also, I've uh, spent some time down below at the mob spawning grounds, and I've been making it bigger. And also, I've made a few adjustments down there to make it more efficient. And I'll probably show you guys that this episode, too. I still haven't quite figured out how, to, uh, how I want to set up our station here. Because... Really what I'm building here is a minecart station for for the mobs, really. But instead of only handling like one player, it's like handling hun hundreds because you can have, I think, up to 200 mobs at a time. So it's going to require quite a bit of planning. You'll notice this is sped up quite a bit now. I think we're only gonna need skeletons here. No good. Alright, I'm gonna stop in. I'll show it once I get it going good. Alright, I think it's gonna work this time. So yeah. I guess that they would suffocate if you stacked one on top, but I guess they don't. Uh, it just goes right on top the head of the mob below. 
So this guy's really like two blocks high. I think. So you can stack them like that. It just takes up two spots. And if the guy below moves out of the way or dies, then the next cart falls down. So, kind of interesting. It was important that I figured that out, because I might stack guys to save space, I'm not sure. Or I might uh, send them into water somehow. Into water streams inside charts. Not really sure. Um, something else I've been playing around with is our panel here. Just trying to figure out some way to have a button to shoot out one and a lever above to uh, trigger a clock to shoot out uh, uh, lots at a time. And I uh, pretty much figured out it's not going to work. Because, um, oops, oh, what was I saying? Yeah, so I got a five o'clock here with a wire along, and it sends power to all five of these. But the problem is if, so you could override it by having a lever, and you would have that down to shut it off, and then if you wanted lots to come out, you would flick that up, and it would keep shooting. But the problem with that idea is you would need, it wouldn't work because the this lever would be down on all of them, so it would always be overridden. If that makes sense. So you would need to have some sort of an AND gate on every one of them. And I'm pretty sure I could do that pretty compact, but the other issue is... Let's see what this button's doing. It's very important that only one comes out. That's what I want. But the thing is, if there's power anywhere near a dispenser, pressing a button makes two come out. So, I'm probably just going to keep it really simple and just have one button, like I originally was planning, and not have a five o'clock or pulse or anything like that because it just complicates things too much and there's no good way of doing it without uh, using up a lot of space that I can think of so next thing we should do I said I was going to show you the mob grounds and the changes this is my total TNT stock. Oh yeah, another thing I did off camera, I uh, found uh, I found a cave system that I went exploring. I was going to record it, but it ended up taking about three hours, and I found probably uh, about seven stacks of iron and tons of redstone, like 12 diamonds, and probably, ooh, I don't know, 15 stacks of coal, and two stacks of gold, and it's a huge cave. So, yeah, I've been making this bigger. 
There's probably, you, can, you probably can't see it, but I think I got 12 or 13 pads now. Before I only had 8. I was going to ask you guys' his opinion on something. I was thinking of uh, abandoning this road and building another one above ground. I wanted to uh, try out a few new designs. And the reason for that is because this is kind of a prime location for the mob spawning grounds. I want to put pads in here. And it just so happens the road is the exact same height as these pads. So it's in the way. And I kind of want to get rid of it. And reuse this area for the spawning grounds. <coughs> And then try build uh, roads at the surface because it'll be easier and faster. Anyway, the only reason I was building one down here is because I needed cobblestone once I started this world. But now I have tons, so there's no points going slowly underground. And the way I've been making uh, these mob pads bigger is basically now I've been digging four squares in. Uh, skip two blocks, four squares in. Kind of like this. Some of my commenters suggested that there's uh, more efficient ways of using the TNT, and they are right. Basically, if you have air spaces around the TNT, it'll blow up more area when it blows up. And so digging four blocks is pretty easy. And then what I do is I just place it three blocks in. all along and then you just run across pretty cool the only downside is it blows up some of your iron and coal but not a big deal. Saves a lot of time. And then you just clean it up a bit. So every TNT that way pretty much blows out 40 blocks. Which saves a lot of time. And, um, I wanted to show my new method of doing uh, the water streams. So the issue with them right now is I have uh, these gaps in between. And I tried going over before, but then the mobs were going back on the pads. And then some people suggested I should dig one block lower. Uh, that would work, but it requires a lot more digging. So the way I decide to do it now, I use uh, signs instead of pressure plates. Ugh, of 
course, it gives me the feather. And uh, same positioning, two blocks from these edges. What I do is I have a sign where the pressure plates were. Oh, actually, I think I... Yeah, I forgot something. I need some stairs for this. And so what you do is... Uh, You got the pressure plates dug out, and uh, you dig down one block. And you dig down one block this way, one block this way. And then you have still water here. So that's bad. Then what you do is you place two stairs here, and it creates flow again and so the mobs just keep going through and they get pushed up the stairs and it's like there's no space so it's uh, it's a better way of doing it I think I noticed uh, quite a bit of improvement right after I changed a lot of it So yeah, I'm going to keep building this bigger, this area, and mobs will spawn faster. And I changed uh, the water at the start here a bit too. So unless you guys, oh yeah, so unless you guys say don't tear this out, uh, I'm probably going to. And just build it at the surface. A guy named uh, Ioxes, a YouTuber, has been working on Eats Road designs. And I kind of wanted to try out some of his new roads. So, the way I have the water now... Um, I don't think this... Uh, these this water was here before so it all merges together here these signs keep the water from flowing back toward me there's no dead spots anymore I still have the angled thing here to keep uh, the tall mobs from getting stuck over here they get pushed to the left And uh, everything else is pretty much the same. So as soon as mobs get passed through here, they're pretty much forced all the way through. Because they can't jump. Which means they can't go back. If you can keep a mob from jumping, he won't be able to... Uh, go against the stream like I'm doing right now. But this uh, mob system is far from perfect because I still have issues with spiders climbing around in here even after they fall in the water canals they can climb out if they want. Uh, but it does pretty good with spiders. And like I've said before, I think 
the main purpose of this mob system is control. It's not to get as many items as possible. There are much better designs for doing that. You should be trying to uh, kill the mobs as fast as possible if you want a mob system solely for items. The goal of this is control, so if I, I can kill them if I want, I can send them to other places if I want, I can sort them if I want. That's kind of what I'm trying to do. So, what should we do now? I'm going to check the time and maybe figure out something fun we can do. Wow, I guess it's been like 20 minutes already. So I guess we should uh, should end it here. Thanks for watching.